Welcome to the Push Bikes channel. Today, with pleasure, I will run you through my bike packing toolkit. This kit is what I take on multi day rides, thousand plus K rides, and has got me through some real bind. Uh, I have a selection of tools that I've chosen throughout my, with my knowledge through working in the shop, on the tools in the, in the workshop, and just from learning myself out on the trail. So there's some important things that we'll just run through first before we get started. Number one, super important to know your tools, exactly what they're gonna do, how they're gonna help you, etc. Number two, how to use them. There's no point taking anything unless you know how to actually use it. And that includes having done it yourself. There's no point watching YouTube videos on how to fix punches or brake chains when you haven't actually done it yourself. It makes a huge difference out on the trail. Push Bikes runs a multitude of training courses, hour long, that you can get in, use your hands on the bike, and actually learn exactly how it's done. Number three is to know your bike. Your bike has a multitude of different parts on it, bolt sizes, there's very, very few standards with bikes now. So it's important to know exactly what's on your bike and ensure that all your tools are capable of adjusting any of those things. Number four, don't be a weight weenie. Skimping on tools is only gonna cost you if something actually goes wrong. This entire combination here, I can put on my bike for under a kilo of weight. Now my total pack size when I'm out on the trail is 10 to 11 kilos. So it's only 10% of that. Being a weight weenie is, is only going to cost you and cause you frustration out on the trail. The tools that I'll get into shortly that I have selected are more individual tools. There's no point taking a, a multi-tool with a multitude of tiny parts on that will just make it harder to use on the trail. Right, so let's get into it. I'll run you through straight away. Pump, really important. Um, Lazine HV drive, high pressure pump. It has a pull out hose. Nice and easy to use to connect to your bike. Um, I normally run this actually attached to the side of my bike or in my pannier bags. So really, really good pump, does a great job. Second, probably my favorite tool out of the kit here is the Lazine multi-chain pliers. So this has got a multitude of things on it, uh, a place to store some chain links, so we can get four of them in the back here which are magnetized on, onto the tool itself. It obviously has a chain breaker, it's got some chain pliers if you want to undo your chain links, quite important. Um, it has a disc brake rotor, disc brake rotor straightener, a bottle opener, if, if, uh, if you're in need for one, and a valve core remover. So really important, really, really cool tool. The great thing about this is you can actually hold it really rigid when you're using the chain tool itself. That's what I was meaning about having more individual based tools. So a really good tool, check it out. Lazine Wrap 2 Multi-Tool. Now this is just a basic multi-tool. It just has all the Allen keys on it, a screwdriver, a both a, screw, uh, a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver and some torque wrenches. So just nice and basic. It doesn't have a chain breaker in it, so not keeping it simple. Now, probably one of the most important tools that I've learned out on the trail is the Leatherman Squirt PS4. Super lightweight. It's got a knife, a file, a pair of scissors, a screwdriver on it again, which I haven't really used, but most importantly, also has a set of pliers on it. So this tool has come in really handy. As you can see, it's super small too. It's come in really handy when I've had stuck zips um, and a couple other things happen like cutting zip ties when I've needed to tie things up. So as a bike mechanic, I didn't really think outside the square in, uh, into more probably the tramping side of tools, but yeah, definitely one for your kit. Uh, next up is a spoke key. Like I said, individual tools, this is way easier to use out on the trail if you actually did have to replace a spoke. Uh, this one actually does have four different spoke uh, nipple sizes on it, so if you come across someone else on the trail, then they can also use it too, but real easy to use. Uh, some chain lube, 
pretty important. Um, I've filled it from a bigger bottle. Um, I've currently got Muckoff Hydrodynamic in there, one of my favourites, along with Finish Line Wet Lube, good, good old school style chain lube. Um, so yeah, if you can't find a smaller bottle of it, just head down to your local um, plastic store or supermarket and just find a little bottle and then you can empty it in there. So yeah, you'll definitely need that on the trail. Also important is just to take a little bit of rag as well, just so that you can dust off the chain, um, get any excess um, dirt, uh, etc. off it before you lube it. Great thing to remember is just to lube your chain at the end of the day before you settle down into your tent or, or, or whatever it may be. Um, that way it can actually dry properly into the chain uh, before you start the next day. Okay, I've got, also got some rubber gloves, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if, if I am fixing a chain or something um, and I, yeah, it's really dirty, then just quite handy to have. Uh, in, in the kit. Do, doesn't take up a lot of room. I've also got some extras in my first aid kit as well so I know they're in there if, if, if I do need them. Uh, next up, CO2 cartridge. Yes I do carry one of those as well as a pump. Uh, reasons being is that if I wanted to hook, get my tubeless tyres to hook back into the bead I would definitely need a tubeless uh, CO2 to do that to snap them in there. So uh, definitely well worth it. Got a 25 gram CO2 on there as well. Just make sure that you are running a bigger volume one. Uh, most of the gravel tires now, um, I'm running 700 by 50s and 45s. Uh, definitely need the bigger CO2s. Uh, this one here has an adjustable head on it, so you don't need to use the CO2 all at once either. Uh, next up, Dynaplug Racer Plug Repair Kit. Super light tool, nice and simple, plug on each end. Um, if you do get a puncture in your, in, in your tubeless tyres, then you can plug it simply with one of these. Um, I also carry some spare plugs as well. Obviously two is not really enough, so I have half a dozen spare plugs in here as well. Um, also a valve, I've got a spare valve. Um, if something happens like my uh, the, the valve on the end of it, um, it does go then I can pull the one out of here put it back in or if I break it then I can use the, the entire valve. I've also got a brass adapter on the end of it as well really useful if you come across petrol station um, service station something like that um, and you wanted to yeah use the ear there maybe instead of using your CO2 or something so you can just store that on the end of that nice and easy and out the way. Uh, tire lever, got a nice robust uh, tubeless tire lever here. One is perfectly sufficient, I've tested it. Um, my tires normally come off in your hands but I do have one in my kit just in case as well. So one, I've actually got a purple one just so it stands out. Um, piece of chain, so this is just the excess from when I fitted uh, a new chain to my bike. I have this um, on me just in case if I get a breakage in my chain or bend my chain or something. I know that I've got uh, four spare chain links in my chain with my chain pliers, but I also have an extra piece of chain if I needed to uh, cut a section out or repair it somehow. So doesn't take up much room. Definitely worth it. Uh, spare tube goes without saying. Uh, you can see mine is wrapped with insulation tape as well. So. Uh, storing two things in one. Uh, it's got half a roll of insulation tape on there so if I did need that then I can un, un, um, undo it and use it on the bike. Uh, people have asked me why not carry two tubes. Uh, well you can see how much extra weight, uh, not weight, size that it's going to take up and to be honest I just don't get that many punches. Um, touch wood obviously. Um, so one is normally sufficient. If, if you have used it, um, then you can obviously replenish it when you're out uh, on the trail. You can stop into a shop or somewhere and, and replenish this itself. Also, just a quick note on that, just make sure that the tube is new, hasn't been sitting in your pack for you know, a multitude of trips. Sometimes these things can wear. Um, you know, last thing you want to do is pull it out and find out there's a hole in it when you're actually trying to put it in your bike on the trail. 
Okay, um, so uh, a piece of tube. There we go, just cut into a square and a piece of plastic. So I've used these as a sleeve. If I got a cut or something in my tire, then I would obviously, a plug's not gonna fix it, so I would then sleeve it. Um, the, the rubber is just designed obviously to protect over the sleeve so it doesn't catch it. And then I would put the tube in to repair the slash in the tire. Um, so really important, Park Tools do sell tire boots, which is a sticky adhesive patch. Uh, nothing wrong with them, I just prefer a nice solid piece of plastic that I know if I got a massive cut in there is really going to protect it. Uh, next up, some duct tape. You never know what's going to fall off your bike. So I've got a, a half a roll of duct tape here just rolled up within itself so I can pull that open and uh, use it on anything that I need to tape back on, if it's my bag. A um, multitude of, of uh, applications there. Um, punch repair kit. I do carry one, obviously. That is my backup. If I get a, if I get a puncher in my tube um, down after I've used it, so I do have a puncher repair kit there. I do have a standard puncher repair kit. I also know uh, that you can use these these patches on the inside of your tire if you slashed it in a bind. So that's why I've got the, the normal ones there. They do tend to stick a little bit better. I do also, just because of the size, have a roll of self-adhesive patches as well. Um, so just to double up and make sure my puncture protection, I've got everything covered. Um, super glue. You never know what's gonna happen. So uh, you can glue anything together, uh, definitely help you out. Along with obviously a handful of zip ties you can see over here. Um, yeah, these two things can definitely get you out of bind if something has uh, broken, like a strap on your bag or something. Um, one of my last trips, the uh, strap on my shoe broke, so I zip tied it up and had my Leatherman tool to cut my zip ties off and trim them to length. So yeah, just a couple, couple of little really important things there. Um, while we're talking about zip ties, I also have some straps here as well. These are just uh, Velcro straps. Um, you not sure where you can buy these, they actually come with bikes um, out of the box. So um, yeah, really handy if you want to strap something up or strap your light on to your helmet, anything. So I've just got a bundle of those in the kit um, just to help me out if uh, something arises like that. Um, I've got a couple of spokes. Now again, I've measured these, I've got the right ones that will fit my bike. I also know that they can, I can get them into my bike. Um, I have six bolt rotors on my bike, so with my moldy tool I can take my rotor off and get into the hub to get them in. I also have an XD cassette body, a SRAM um, axis setup, so I know that I can pull the cassette body off the drive side of the hub and get into the spokes as well. So a couple of spokes there. I've got my tire lever, uh, my not my tire lever, sorry, my spoke key there, so I can uh, adjust it up afterwards. And yeah, as I mentioned, my multi-tool to get my disc brake rotors off. So a couple of spokes. I, I have a spare derailleur hanger. Now I'm not completely sold on carrying one of these, um, but I am. So the, my theory is that if you're in need of a derailleur hanger on your trip, then you're in need of a new derailleur. The, chances of bending a derailleur hanger I think are pretty small. Um, the chances are much greater is that you actually rip your derailleur off and your derailleur hanger at the same time. The reason I have uh, carried one is just that I know if something did bad did happen, I can obviously convert my bike into a single speed uh, with my chain breaker and my chain links and my extra chain. Um, and then when I did get to, into areas of service where I could maybe visit a bike shop or something like that to get some repairs done, the bike shop would likely have the derailleur on hand. Um, I could guarantee they probably wouldn't have the hanger on hand. So that's why it's in the kit. Doesn't weigh a hell of a lot, so yeah. Um, I've got a spare cleat. Um, I've heard many stories about cleats falling off shoes. I've got the two bolts and the washer. Um, never happened to me. Um, again, it's just looking after your gear, checking their tight before you, before you go. Um, but yeah, it makes sense to me, so yes, I definitely carry a spare cleat with me. 
Um, I have also a bag of bolts. Now this has just got some steam bolts in it, um, some drink bottle bolts, some disc brake rotor bolts, just a few bolts on the bike that I know that, you know, the possibilities of breaking them are there. Um, I've also got some seat post bolts. Um, there's a lot of pressure on the top of your seat clamps here uh, with your seat bags that we run on them. So yeah, a fair bit, fair bit of strain on it. So just I've just got a handful of bolts there I know that um, as a backup if, if they did snap on the trail in the middle of nowhere. Um, that I could use. Obviously if your seat snapped off, it's pretty hard to ride your bike without your seat. You could try and zip tie it on and tape it on, but it's never gonna be the same if you've got a brand new bolt to go into it. Touch wood, that's how easy it is to fix a repair trail side. Um, I've also got some uh, pulley wheel bolts in there as well. Um, I have a pulley wheel. I do know some people do carry the entire pulley wheel. Again, I'm of the belief that if you're in need of a pulley wheel, you're in need of an entire derailleur. So what I have got in my bag of bolts is I've got the pulley wheel bolt and I've got the two washers side by side. Um, these are exactly the same on the SRAM top and bottom. Uh, pulley wheels use the same bolt and washers. So I know that I've got that covered there as well. Um, a lighter. Uh, never used it, but I feel that I need it if my gas uh, canister or something won't ignite or I need to... Um, uh, heat a frayed strap or something on the bike, I know that I've got it there so that uh, I can take care of that. So that in a nutshell is, is basically is, is all I take. Um, and that would get me through any, any, uh, any trail mishap on, on the trail itself. Um, a couple of side notes um, that I see people carrying around is, is, is sealant, bottle of sealants. Um, you can see, I mean, they're not massively huge in size or weight. Um, but no, I don't carry one. Um, I don't feel, don't feel I have the need to. If I do slash my tire, uh, some sealant is not gonna fix it. Um, if I can't plug my tire, um, then it's, it's not going to work. I'm gonna be using my tube. So yeah, I kinda really don't see the point in that, but uh, maybe in the future, let me know in the comments below. Uh, disc brake pads. See a lot of people put these in their kits. Um, yeah, I'm not uh, sold on that complete idea as well, uh, maybe in the future. Uh, important thing is looking after your bike, is making sure before you set out on your trip that your pads are new or near new. Um, I also use metal pads or sintered pads as they're sometimes called. These are a lot heavier duty than the standard uh, resin pads. So they just um, won't, uh, you won't get as much heat in them and they just handle the harsh conditions a whole lot better. The downside to them is they don't work as well in low temperatures, um, especially on those frosty mornings, but they do definitely last longer. So yeah, I'm not completely sold on that. Um, if I was doing a two week trip and I knew that there was lots of mud or I was really out of service areas, then maybe, um, but no, not, uh, not, not at this stage. Um, the other thing is just ca carrying, um, we talked about the multi-tool before, um, you know, on another note, it's just even possibly car car carrying in individual Allen keys. It will cost you a little bit more on weight, um, probably double, double the weight to a multi-tool, um, but they are so much easier to use if you're actually trying to fix your bike on the trail. So yeah, just, just you know, have, have the equation of that. Um, I personally normally carry an 8mm, um, I'll just put those other ones down, an 8mm with me on the trail. Now the reason for this is you, I've seen m many many people uh, and videos from manufacturers with the 8mm of the multi-tool trying to undo their crank bolts. Now for those of you who've actually in the industry or not, have worked on your bike, if you're trying to undo a SRAM crank bolt um, or, or any 8mm crank bolt, there's very, very little leverage on that, and I can guarantee you would never get it done, undone. So that is going to definitely save you. Um, yeah, it's gonna cost you another 60, 70 grams in weight, um, but definitely could be worth it. Um, so if you've got a chainring bolt or something come undone on the inside of your chain ring, cha um, 
chain wheel, uh, then you need to gonna get it off to tighten it up possibly. So yeah, definitely worth a thought of carrying an eight mil um, Allen key as well. Um, now, how I carry this uh, gear on the bike, that I'd normally carry uh, a lot of these tools in a empty water bottle that goes on the down tube of my bike. I can get most of these tools in there and they're safely out of the way. I know they're dry. Um, these things are really cheap, don't weigh anything. Um, yeah, and super handy. Um, for the tools that I may need um, on the trail a little bit more regularly, which is kind of more this side here, through my multi-tool, my Leatherman, the pump, um, and the chain lube, I would normally just carry in a little bag or something like that um, of that form that would go into my frame bag on the in inside of my bike. So that's normally how I carry my tools. Um, you can get bigger bottle versions of these bottles, so you could pro you, if you've got a bigger 700 mil version, you could probably fit all of these tools in there, uh, providing you've got the clearance on your frame to do that. So that's it. I've run you through all the tools I take. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But like I said, really important just to know your bike. Um, you know, know how to use the tools, know what the tools are gonna do, know your bike, and don't get go to weight weenie when you're selecting them. Um, yeah, and just have fun on the trail. Enjoy your bikepacking trips.